got a few extra seats. You guys just pile on in. I'd like to call this July 1st meeting of the Cookville City Council to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilman Anderson. Present. Councilman Shelton. Here. Mayor Salee. Present. Vice Mayor Davis. Present. Councilman Williams. Present. All present. All right, thank you. If we could all rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, Mr. Shipley, do we have any additions or corrections to the agenda this evening? Need to add two items. Uh, item 15, consider rescinding action approved on June the 17th, 2010 which set a date for a public hearing on Ordinance 100609, rezoning 1100 Old Calvary Road from RS-20 to QM, sponsor James Mills. And item 16 set a date August the 5th, 2010 for a public hearing on Ordinance 100609, rezoning 1100 Old Calvary Road from RS-20 to QM, and rezoning a portion of 1805 East Spring Street from RS-20 to commercial, to CL Commercial Legal. All right. Legal. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> Sponsor, James Mill. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shipley. Do we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. We have our motion second. Any discussion by the council? Seeing no discussion, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carried. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shipley. Old business. A couple of items. Item two, consider approval of minutes. Council meeting held on June the 17th, 2010. We have a motion and a second to approve those minutes. With approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion by the council? Any comments from the audience? Seeing no further comments, all vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Item three, hold a public hearing and consider on second and final reading ordinance 100608. Mm -hmm. Amending the budgets for the various funds and departments of the City of Cookville for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2010. Sponsor Mike Davis. Um, Mayor and Council Members, there have been no changes since first reading to these proposed budget amendments for the funds, and I would recommend your approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. All right. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Do we have a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. We have the motion and second. Discussion by the Council. Any comments from the audience? Seeing no further discussion, uh, all vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. In the consent agenda, we have two items, item four and five. Uh, consider awarding bids for annual and semi-annual materials for the Public Works Department. And item five, consider awarding bids for the chemicals for the Water Quality <laughs> Control Department. Do we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? 
So moved. Second. I have the motion second. Are any of those items needed to be pulled to uh, for discussion? If not, all vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. All right, thank you. Now to the new business portion of our meeting, item six. Hold a public hearing and consider on first reading ordinance 100604, closure and abandonment of an undeveloped section of Mill Avenue located on the property at 87 South Willow Avenue and declaring as surplus sponsor, Mr. James Mills. Mayor and council members, the location of the right of way to be considered for closure and abandonment is depicted upon the screen. There's an aerial view of it. Uh, historic maps indicated that Mill Avenue uh, at, at that time uh, was shown as Mill Street, actually connected West Spring and West Broad Streets. And at some <laughs> point in time, the most southern portion of the street was apparently closed and abandoned with, and when I'm referring from here to here, and this portion of right of way remained. According to a survey completed by Chris Vick, the right of way uh, <laughs> portion that's re requested for closure is approximately 92.65 feet in length and 35.12 feet in width. The survey indicates the right of way consists of approximately 3,242.7 square feet. The property that surrounds this, which is parcel 13 on tax map 53H group B, is the location of the, or previously the location of Universal Plastics. About that aerial photograph. And the current owners of that property are the ones that have submitted this request. Their property is contiguous on all sides with this right of way. Of course, the, tennis, the uh, municipal code in Title 16, Chapter 4, specifies the procedure we're supposed to follow for closure and abandonment. One of them is to be reviewed by all applicable departments. The Water Quality Depro uh, Control Department indicates that there's a sewer line located through this right of way. In fact, it runs basically right through the middle, and that there's a, a, an existing utility easement 20 feet in width that need, would need to be retained. There's also a fire hydrant located in the the northeastern corner of the property, and an easement would also need to be maintained for that. The value of abandoned right-of-ways, as we've stated, <coughs> I believe at our last meeting, is typically established based on the county assessor's values of those properties, land values. In this case, the adjoining property is valued at $4.44 per square foot. Due to the encumbrance of the sewer line easement, most of the subject right-of-way cannot be built upon. This significantly reduces its value. In past appraisals we've had done for similar properties, the value is usually reduced by half, and that's what we're proposing here. This would place the square foot value at $2.22, um, which would result in a purchase price of $7,198.79. The Planning Commission has recommended for approval of closure and abandonment and declaration of surplus property with sale to the joint property owner, subject to compliance with the municipal code and to the retention of the uh, utility easements that I mentioned. The planning department concurs with this recommendation. All right, thank you, Mr. Mills. Do we have a motion and a second to approve? Move for approval. Second. I have the motion and a second. Any discussion by the council? Are, are both property owners buying, or is it only one property owner? Only one property owner. This is all one parcel. <coughs> and this is a remnant that, to be honest, we didn't know we had until a survey was done, and then we did research on it, and it was a previously a city street. I'll go back to the aerial photograph, uh, Councilman Shelton. This is all owned okay. by Universal Practice. This is and that's the property that's piece. being auctioned. That's the property yes, that's being auctioned. that's correct. Okay, so that's th correct. this was cleaning all that up through that process. Yes, probably. that's exactly okay. right. So whatever deed we make will retain uh, sufficient easements for both the sewer and the fire hydrant. That's correct. That's condition for recommended <clears throat> by the Planning Commission. Is this the area where uh, there was some... Uh, Hard to identify leaks that came out onto Willow Street. Is this in that Pretty area? Pretty close to it. That this is that <laughs> entrance here. This is the entrance uh, where the billboard located, and that's where, at least, Ronnie may want to come up and speak on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. I'm sorry, I brought we it up. It and fixed it. <laughs> okay. There you go. <clears throat> Very good. Any further comments from the council? Any comments from the audience? Seeing no further comment, I'll vote. Five votes, motion carries. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Mills. Item seven, hold a public hearing and consider on first reading ordinance 100605, providing a tax levy for the 2010-2011 fiscal year. Sponsor, Mike Davidson. Mayor and council members, uh, the first ordinance 
we will uh, establish a tax levy for the city of Cookville. Uh, right now the proposed tax levy is 87 cents. This is the same uh, tax rate that we have had for the city of Cookville the last two years. And the allocation, I'd like to point out to you this year, we're recommending allocating that tax rate slightly differently. Uh, <coughs> the allocation would uh, allocate 74 cents to the general fund, uh, 4 cents to the economic development fund, 1 penny to the quality of life fund, and 8 cents to the debt service fund. And what we are pro proposing is uh, the debt service fund in the past had had 19 cents allocated to it, moving 11 cents of that to the general fund. And then in, <clears throat> in turn, there's a revenue in the general fund that's the in-loop payment from the Cookville Regional Medical Center. Medical Center, we would allocate that to the debt service fund, so it's kind of swapping revenue around. And, uh, but that would be the allocation for the tax rate, and it would be 87 cents. And uh, total estimated collections would be $5,710,000 for uh, all funds and I'd recommend your approval. All right, thank you, Mr. Davidson. <coughs> Do we have a motion and a second to approve? So uh, moved. No, second. We have our motion second. Any discussion by the council? Well, uh, I had a, first of all, I want to thank Mike and his staff and Jim and all the departments for their hard work on this budget. Uh, we're living in uh, interesting times or challenging times. As everyone may well know, we had a, a very interesting work session uh, meeting on Monday. Uh, about three or four weeks ago, I sent the council members and city manager a, an email that uh, suggested the possibility <coughs> of me amending or making a reduction to the uh, debt service fund uh, because there were some things three years ago that we <coughs> thought we were going to need to do in the future uh, that in my questioning as it relates to are these still viable projects, do we want to do those? Uh, communicated that there may not be a need for us to do those anymore, whether uh, it's 10th Street was being the biggest one. I uh, spoke to a couple of council members, talked to Public Works Department. There, there may still be a need to do 10th Street, but not right now, according to when I communicated with these individuals. And so I, I originally proposed the idea three weeks ago and thought, well, if we really needed this revenue, if we really needed the ability to borrow, this would be a uh, almost two times the amount of debt service capacity that was here when I became a city councilman. If we really needed that revenue, there would be a, this list that would say, here's what we plan on doing over the next three, four years, and this is why we're going to need this nine to $12 million in debt service capacity. And, and quite honestly, there, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a list, there wasn't any uh, presentation of the list or any ideas. Uh, in that meeting, also on Monday, Jim made a suggestion that Maybe we move this money to State, uh, State Street A. Uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, something that I thought was a good idea, maybe. But um, based upon what I've seen as far as our budget is concerned, I think why we were at an impasse on Monday was there's this perception or this differing. I think uh, uh, Jean, Vice Mayor Davis, said it well. She said we're at an impasse, I think, and we're just a differing opinions. I, I happen to believe that if uh, the money is currently in the citizen's pocket and we levy a tax like we're doing today to take it out of their pocket and put it in ours to provide services. If we need that revenue, we should ask for it. My perception was, and, and still is, that we do not need the eight cents uh, in, in total in order to do that. Uh, I felt like that by reducing the debt service tax from <coughs> nine million to five million, we're still leaving the city and the, the coming council in better shape than when I came on it, and almost two times as far as their ability to borrow debt service capacity, and almost two and a half times better than when uh, the previous council was on there. And so uh, maybe I'm just of a different uh, idea or understanding. And so um, because of that, and because I really feel like that this is uh, and I said in the meeting on Monday, I don't think this is going to impact negatively, and I haven't heard one department tell me specifically that this is going to impact negatively their ability to continue to provide the same level of services that we're currently pro providing to our citizens. It's not going to impact their budgets uh, by doing this. All it would, all it would do is leave, in, in city manager and 
some of my fellow council members leave a small amount of money back in the pocket of the of the citizens. So with that being said, I would like to make a motion to amend the debt service capacity and reduce it by four cents in an effort to provide the, the, the council in the next term with a the same or if not 10 percent better debt service capacity than I came in as a city councilman. So I would appreciate your support. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to amend uh, four cents on the general obligation debt service fund. Is that correct? Yes. So that would bring the total down to 83 cents total? Or <coughs> oh, it would bring it down to two. 4 cents. Well, they'd bring the total tax rate down to 83 right. cents. Yes. Right. Right. Debt service allocation would go to 4 cents. Right. <coughs> okay. Now discussion by the council. Uh, I'll say a couple things. Uh, having thought back when, when we were first uh, vice mayor and mayor, when we were elected eight years ago, we, we came in and there's $1.8 million in debt capacity. and. I was thinking back, one of the first things that we did was the, the SunTrust deal that came in, and, and we didn't have a lot of money to spend, and, and we were trying to, to scrape and, and pry and figure out where we could come up with, we had this you know, really good opportunity to, to bring this business here and bring jobs here, and um, I think history will show that it was, was a good thing for our community, and, but I guess my point to that is what it made us do, I think it made us very really work together and look at and, and be very good stewards of the money and figure out where where can we get these things from and still accomplish projects over the the term that we were in office and once again um, as uh, councilman williams pointed out um, we we did several projects during our first term the second term you know we had about four and a half five million dollars in debt capacity and we have again done projects but we we've, we've been conservative we've we haven't done everything we wanted to do for fear of you know um overspending or, or running out or i, I guess I, me personally i just because you have the ability to spend money doesn't mean you should spend it and um i, I i've always taken that stance and, and i've always tried to do what i thought was right and i just feel like this is an opportunity to to give back a little bit from from that fund while you know nine million dollars is a lot of money we could reduce it back to five put some money a little bit of money back in people's pockets no it's not a great deal but to me it's more about the principle of uh being able to say that yeah there was a tax done but it was it was removed because we just didn't need it right now doesn't it hinder it, as he said it does not take away one dime from a departmental budget it doesn't hinder the next council from from doing projects and and i would hope <clears throat> within the next council that there is a pro priority prioritizing of projects and, and a planning going forward of, of how to do this my one final comment to this is if we do this uh, and reduce it down to five million <clears throat> if the next council comes in and 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 do and does no projects the first year the debt service fund would immediately jump back up to 7.5 million dollars so really in the big scheme of things, we're not talking about a drastic decrease because the, uh, it exponentially pays off every year. As you pay debt off, your, your debt capacity increases depending upon how much uh, debt you issue during that term. But it would, it would jump back up to $7.5 million uh, FY uh, uh, fiscal year 2011, through t after 2011. So that's uh, why I'm supportive of this. <coughs> Um, well, certainly I have a different opinion of um, lowering a tax rate. I am not so sure that our economy is going is that stable at this point, so I don't see the need of lowering it when um, we we don't have that assurance that um, that it's going to pull back, you know, quick and go forward quick enough. And then I, I feel like it's just there's just the need is not there, and the fact that this tax rate of 87 cents certainly is not an astronomical or large figure, and for the average taxpayer, I think that um, uh, this is a, a modest um, tax placed on property. Uh, I think we were given a $100,000 home. Not drop your taxes ten dollars two hundred thousand dollar home drop it twenty dollars so I just don't see the need that we should go through this process of, of 
dropping the tax rate. I mean, I appreciate uh, my fellow councilmen who feel like that this is a, a, a nice gesture for the citizens, and certainly I don't want to put any tax burden <coughs> on citizens, but I don't feel like an 87 cents um, number is a tax burden <coughs> in our community. Mr. Shipley, I have a question if you would answer it for me, please. We rate <coughs> this tax rate that we have here before <coughs> us, uh, the 87 cents. Correct me if I'm wrong. We did this. We raised the tax um, two years ago, correct? Uh, I think that's <coughs> correct, yes. Okay, so that was in 2008. Yes. Do you remember the last time prior to 2008 taxes were raised? And I, I uh, cut you cold. I didn't give you any, I didn't tell was, you to do any homework. Sorry. Was, I actually think it was 2003, the, somewhere around in there. We had, to, we had to raise taxes the first term because the state did away with the hall income tax and we had to make up for what that was. <laughs> Yeah, and, they reduced and, the sh state shared taxes. And then the only other tax we did was uh, establishing the quality of life fund, the economic development fund, mm -hmm. during, during our first term. So that was the 03? So Correct. That would have been 2003? Mm -hmm. 2002 or 3 Three. was when the whole income tax, okay. and then yeah. okay. 2000. It's not, I think it's 2003. I think it was. I think 2000. Too. Wasn't that when the, the state legislature took half of our state shared revenue? Yeah, they reduced yeah. the state shared that revenue. Was, all yeah. income tax was part of that. That was part of that. That's why we did it. Well, <coughs> in looking at this, um, uh, 2003 taxes were raised, and then again 2008. I feel like the councils that have been before us have been very very conservative in um, asking for money from the or, or requiring money from the citizens and we're not raising taxes and I feel like that we ought to keep it at the same amount that we have and we've allocated we've reduced the debt service fund to we went from what was it 17 cents no. It was 19 cents. 19 cents. And so now we've reduced that by nearly half, so it's at no. eight. No, we haven't reduced We it haven't though. reduced the overall tax rate. Right? We reallocated it. No, that's what I mean, but the debt service fund part. Mm -mm. The, the oh, it's because the CRMC. Yes, right. I'm sorry. Right. Thank you. But I definitely think that we ought to just keep it at 87 cents. <clears throat> Well, my concern, uh, you know, th I think back to uh, particularly fall 2008 and 2009 when, um, you know, in our city where we've had, I think, as high as 56 percent of our budget being dependent upon sales taxes yeah. in the past. And we were seeing about a, what, about a six to eight percent increase month over month for years. I mean, we were doing really good as a micropolitan hub of the Upper Cumberland region and, you know, the home of tech, Tennessee Tech, the hospital and all the restaurants. But when the economy really tanked in uh, the fall of 08, we had some serious discussions about how we were going to provide those services to the people mm -hmm. of this community. And uh, I know that we postponed some step raises and cost of living increases for employees. And there's certainly, I know with the hard winter that we had this year, there's been a lot of issues with the, the asphalt and the paving in our community. And, <coughs> you know, from the constituents that I've spoken to in the last few days, uh, you know, and I think there's some good ideas being thrown out here, but the people that I've spoken to, when you, when you, to Gene's point of saving the average person, you know, 10 or $20 a year, most of the people, in fact, all of the people that I've spoken to have said, you know, I would just as soon you keep that money and improve our city. And, uh, you know, we, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, and I, James or Mike can probably tell us, where do we fall as far as tax rates in, in the state? I mean, we're, uh, we're about 12th or 13th lowest for any city with a population of at least 20,000. Mm -hmm. There are some really small communities that have low tax rates. Now, I, I certainly see both, both Councilman Shelton and, and William's point. Um, <laughs> But in the future, forecasting what I see out there on the horizon for our city with the uh, the business, Highlands Business Park, the you know the roads, the things that we're going to need, <coughs> I feel like if we take this tax 
uh, we revert back two cents, four cents, then the next council may not only have to raise that four cents, but may have to raise it yet more. So suddenly the burden for the average person then becomes even greater where it's, you know, we've spread it out. As we said, we haven't had tax rates increase, you know, very rarely. So, you know, I, I would have to say, I, I think I'm going to have to just go with what <coughs> was originally proposed there on the 87 cents. Well, and I think, Sam, you make a good comment. I think one of the interesting parts about this is, is that I think the council's to be commended regardless of how the vote goes. I think uh, the people I talked to with this, uh, including, I, I was able to talk to uh, six different candidates that are running for city council next time, and I asked them the question. I said, am I missing it here? Am I the only, am I, you know, completely blinded by this? And, you know, all but one of them agreed that they didn't feel like that it was going to impact the budget. Uh, the people that I talked to said, you know, I think this is a good idea. We could use in our family every dollar we get. I mean, you know, whether it's a lot of money to you or a lot of money to someone else, you know, that $10 may be just enough to pay the light bill on this month. I mean, we don't know. And, uh, I, I think that uh, there's been a lot of communication. I think the best part for me is I've been able to <clears throat> communicate with other people in the community and get their ideas and opinions. And uh, that's why this form of government, I think, is one of the better forms of government because you're able to get a good cross-section of the people and the understanding. And so, uh, you know, it would have been, it would have been, uh, uh, I, I would have been amiss to come in here today and not um, suggest this amendment because I really feel like that we did steward the money well the last four years. We've done miraculous things with so much less, but uh, the next council will be able to do exactly the same that we are. They just won't be able to borrow. They just wouldn't be able to borrow $9 million. They'd only be able to borrow $5 million. And so, uh, as I, I appreciate the process, and I'm thankful for the democracy in which we live in, and uh, I just ask, ask you all to consider that again. So, thank you. I made a point to um, speak to a group of people also on this, and the overwhelming feeling with the group of people that I was with on Sunday was we didn't need to lower the tax rate. We've got a, a decent tax rate, a very low tax rate, and that we needed to just maintain the status quo and hope that in the next few years things um, continue to progress as, you know, as predicted, as expected with the economy. And, um, uh, and just because you have credit doesn't mean you're going to spend it, use it. And um, that's the charge of the citizens to help with their representative, representatives to make sure that their voices are heard about that. And I feel that the city of Cookville has um, always been, um, well, in, in the past, the recent years, the years that I've been um, aware of <coughs> the government here in Cookville, it's been a very steady, very conservative, and yet progressive um, with, with money. And uh, I feel that we're in good hands here in Cookville and look forward to <coughs> what comes next. Very good. Do we have any comments from the audience? <coughs> any additional comments by the council? At this time, we are voting on the amendment. Correct. At this time, the amendment was to uh, reduce the total out of the debt service fund, remove four cents. And seeing no further discussion, all vote. Three no, two <coughs> yes. Motion fails. All right. Now we're back to the original motion of the ordinance with the 87 cents as presented by Mike Davids. In fact, can I? say something sure um, I think all of us talk I heard all of us say and I know we talked <coughs> Monday in the work session about our roads and about what uh, shape you know we we have about five hundred thousand dollars each year in State Street aid and um, 
and Mr. Shipley can speak to this in a minute, but I, my understanding is we should be spending quite a bit more than that on roads. Um, so I would like to make a motion to move four cents from the debt service fund to the state street aid fund to aggressively pave and repair our city streets. All right, we have a, got a motion on the table. We have a, well, this is this an is amendment. An amendment to the oh, motion. Oh, okay, we have a second yeah. amendment, and we need a second. Second, I'll second. We have our second. Now we'll discuss the amendment to say it one more time, Ricky. To, to move four cents from the debt service fund to the State Street Aid Fund. Move four cents from the uh, debt service fund to the State Street Aid Fund. State Street Aid Fund yep. to be used exclusively for paving. For street. paving yeah. of, of streets. Would you would you speak to the the study that you? had seen Mr. Shipley about that? Uh, well, it was, I was at a seminar with Tennessee Municipal League uh, several years ago, and there was uh, some public works guy, I don't remember his name, don't even remember what he looks like, but he, he said that based on the, the number of miles of streets that we have in the city of Cookville, and we're a little bit bigger now than we were then as far as space, miles of streets he said we should spend at least a million dollars a year on our paving and uh, we are uh, we spend about five to six hundred thousand a year uh, but we've got uh nil street sitting out there right now that needs to be paved we've got <coughs> portions of jackson street that are falling in nil street greg is uh, how much was it to pave do you remember Two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and so if you got a five hundred thousand or six hundred thousand dollar budget, that pretty well shoots it down. So moving this four cents would would put two hundred forty thousand dollars extra into the State Street Aid. Actually, fund. based on the penny, it puts over about two hundred sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, two sixty. So, so that would certainly. What, so this would, this was the recommendation that uh, was this not the recommendation <coughs> or you said when I made the comment on Monday about it was this not the same thing you were saying then about yeah I was I was suggesting instead of lowering the tax rate uh, you could shift that that four cents to to benefit some other part of the uh, city program and it uh, I mean we could we could certainly support that uh, going into the state street aid fund for paving and uh, if you might get a couple of years down the road and kind of get <coughs> caught up for a while and, and the next council may want to move it back but well, I'd like to ask Public Works, uh, Greg Brown, is this something that, I mean, one of the comments and that we've had and that I've had is, is that, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to find some money, let's fix the streets. Even Sam alluded to it earlier that we've had a pretty tough winter. I mean, do you think if we did this for a while that you could catch up on the streets and? It would help, yes. Yeah. So we're not, we're talking about, you know, $760,000 for for just paving, is that what we're saying now? If we put the 260 in, is that what? I'm sorry, I may have lost. If, if we I moved roll right. the, I think we you rolled the 250 to the. We have 500,000 in the budget yeah, this yeah. year and so for paving. In for State paving. Street Aid, and it would add another 260 thousand dollars. Okay, so over 700 thousand then for total for paving. paving. Um, okay. And when we say paving, I mean like when we did the um, the concrete at the. Um, Intersection. At the intersection. Yeah, that's Does that, that considered that, paving, yeah. even though that's yeah, not that, really that came out of that line item. That came out of that line yeah. item. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was something, I mean, it and made the, a dramatic difference. Dramatic. Oh, and we got some other much. hills that need to be fixed Absolutely. like that, too. And, and as we move into building out the infrastructure for the Highlands Business mm -hmm. Park, I mean, is that, again, could that be something, or is that going to be a different uh, thing? That, that different will be paid for through bonds. We've already issued yeah. Well, you have. Uh, we haven't approved. issued the debt. You have approved. authorized approved the debt yeah. to be issued. To be yeah. issued. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, I think that's a good idea I to I can, I can go to ahead. to move that four cents to something like the street, um, the streets, and we could see that catch up a little bit mm -hmm. and um, feel like, and then the citizens would see the actual. That's right the actual result of their tax dollars as they drive through the streets of Cookville. And what does that do to the debt service fund then, Mike? If we're putting uh, the 2 Right now the debt capacity uh, stands at $9 million. Uh, it would cut that down to roughly $5 million, 4.9 to $5 million, if we move that $0.04 cents out. Now we had, not to confuse anything, uh, we had discussed at work session possibly another bond issue that would include funding some uh, pavement and resurfacing and I don't know if that would be something we, sh we could possibly look at 
in terms of that nine million leaving the four cents there and issuing uh, those bonds to do the paving and that's something we discussed briefly you may not may not recall that we discussed it briefly at the work session so instead of doing two hundred sixty thousand dollars worth of additional paving we could borrow you know whatever amount we decided to do well this would but the 260 would be actual money that we'd pay right now if we did the bond issue we'd be paying it over years we would have to be paying it right? paid yeah. over years yeah. which I'm, which is fine I, I i think the big point here is that the you know obviously the next council this money is it's not like it's it's like we're doing right now it's a line item it can be maneuvered around right. and changed around right. if they need to so if if it would allow the, the you know to to get um, Neal Street paved at 200. This will virtually pay for Neal Street being paved mm -hmm. uh, as soon as possible. Go ahead and get that done, and that that way, if, if the next council needed to, to maneuver that around again, they could. So that is true, Mike. If if let's say we spent the next two years spending an extra little over a half million dollars paving roads, if it came to the point where the they need to borrow more than this five million dollar capacity, just shift the capacity, money. They could shift the money back from State Street Aid back to the debt service capacity. Yes. yes. The tax rate could be reallocated back. Sure. Yes. Okay. Just like we reallocated the in lieu payment and the right. and the property tax. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Same pot of money. I certainly like the idea of being able to pave the roads and pay for it as we go. I, I mean, we can't this. we can't always do that, right. but that would be a, a very good thing to do at this point. I agree. I think anytime we can improve our streets and pay as we go I think we can't can't go wrong with it and if we can just get some bike lanes on there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make another amendment that they must include <laughs> bike lanes? Go ahead and <laughs> let's vote on this one let's vote on this one don't people, get us too confused people often contradict they think you should ride a bicycle on a, a sidewalk but that is inaccurate is bicycles a vehicle has to be ridden just like a vehicle we need to give them <clears> space any further discussion on the uh, amendment to move four cents from the debt service fund to the State Street Aid Fund for paving? Any further discussion? Any comments from the audience? Voting on the amendment. All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right. Now we're back to the original ordinance. Uh, levying taxes of 87 cents. Uh, do we have any further discussion um, on the original ordinance? Any comments from the audience? Seeing no further discussion, all vote. Five, eight, five yes votes. <coughs> all right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Um, item eight: Hold a public hearing and consider on first reading Ordinance 100606, authorizing appropriations for financial aid to public service, nonprofit, and charitable organizations for the 2010-2011 fiscal year. Sponsor Mike Davidson. Uh, Mayor, council members, just to point out some things before I go through each uh, nonprofit and the amount that uh, recommended to award to them. Uh, total nonprofit support for 2010-11 would be $616,614. Uh, this uh, ordinance does eliminate uh, $5,000 in funding to pace setters. It also eliminates $2,500 in funding to the Plateau Mental Health Center. It reduces funding uh, for the Upper Cumberland Drug Court. We had been giving them the last couple of years $15,000. It reduces that amount to $7,500. In the past, we had been uh, allocating this past year $20,000 to the Imagination Library. It would reduce that to $10,000. Uh, additional requests, it is included. That would be additional funding, would be an additional $5,000 for WCTE. And then there's $30,000 in additional funding for the Highlands uh, Initiative Phase 2. That's including in this. And some uh, requests that are not funded, and I'd just like to point those out to you. The Children's Museum had asked for $12,000. That's not included in this ordinance. Uh, the Child Advocacy Center had asked for $7,240. That's not included. And the Court Appointed Special Advocates had asked for $1,000, and that's not included. Um, just going through the list of the nonprofits, uh, the Putnam County Library would be appropriated $296,557. The Cookville Senior Citizen Center, $47,530. $28,000 to the Upper Cumberland Regional Airport. $60,000 to the uh, Chamber, which is $30,000 would be designated for the Highlands. And 
Then we have $25,400 to the Emergency Management Agency. $32,417 is allocated to the to Cityscape with 15306 of that is uh, allocated directly for the Fall Fun Fest. There's $18,608 for the Cookville Arts Council, $1,901 for the Cumberland Arts Society. Then we have uh, 48589 to the Tennessee Rehabilitation Center, 11270 for the Cookville Putnam County Clean Commission, $1,901 to the Upper Cumberland Human Resource Agency for the Mills on Wheels program, uh, 11407 for Genesis House, and 11407 for Helping Hands, 10000 total for WCTE this year, uh, $2,377 for the H.J. Stevens Center for Child Abuse, 7000 for the Kids Putnam, 7500 again for the Upper Cumberland Drug Court, and then 10000 for the Imagination Library. All right. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Do we have a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Discussion by the council. Mike, could you go back uh, to the page where you had the uh, breakdown of what was reduced? What was there? We go. So when you say reduced funding, Upper Cumberland Drug Court, you reduced it by 7,500? We re reduced it by 7,500 down to 7,500. Okay. Cut it in half. It had been $15,000 for the last, mm -hmm. <coughs> it was initially 15, and that's been in place for five years, I think. Mm -hmm. And you verified that that would not uh, affect their grant? Their treasurer told me that it would not. They would work with whatever we uh, can give them. Very good. I'd like to point out on the uh, Imagination Library, since um, I was tagged with that, um, being against that, I, let me first say that uh, I think reading obviously is very important. Having books is very important. My twins uh, receive two books in the mail each month, and, and that's one of their most exciting times to see what book they're going to receive. So I am definitely in favor of that program. Uh, I think the, the concern was that, uh, at least that I had, and, and I think some of the rest of the council share that, was that all the cities uh, within uh, Putnam County do not share in this expense. Only Putnam County and Cookville fund this. Um, I talked to Jeff Conyers, who's the president of the Governor's Books uh, from Birth Foundation, had an extensive conversation with him. Uh, he was explaining to me about the process of how the, the, how the funding is, and he, he said that we were one of uh, maybe only two or three counties uh, and cities within the state that um, still fund this directly only from the governments, that most of these are set up with boards that help raise the money and fund that. Uh, I'm proud that we can still fund this. I, I did uh, share with him that we were um, talking about, re of course, he had, he had read it and was talking about reducing it. He did say that they have refigured the formula process and that, that our actual cost this year would have been cut by at least 25 percent from 20,000 down somewhere l less than 15,000. I told him that uh, we were going to uh, probably reduce this to 10, and he assured me without a doubt that no child in Putnam County would uh, go without a book if we, re if we uh, reduce this. So um, I would like to see uh, Baxter, Monterey, and Allgood participate in some capacity if they can. Um, uh, I don't know who would be. He said that he was going to try to look into that and was going to contact those uh, governmental entities himself to, uh, to check on that. So hopefully they can participate as well. But um, like, as I said, he did assure me that no child would, be, would go without a book because of our reducing this funding. Well, and I think one of the things that came up because of this, and I forget the exact figures, but the Imagination Library, the, the, uh, it started out, what was the original fee? Tw 20 the first year was $2,500. $2,500, and that was seven years ago? Uh, five or six. <laughs> five, se okay, it's five or six years ago, and over, over time, it went from $2,500 to $20,000. And um, we, it kind of raised our eyebrows, and we needed to look into it. And definitely dealing with the nonprofits, it's one of the hardest things because there's not, there's not a group of people that come before this council wanting money that doesn't deserve it. You know, it's just a matter of there's only so much that can go out. And... Um, 
So I think that this year we did do a good process of looking at what we were spending and really um, studied it a whole lot more than we did the previous three years that I've been on the council. <clears throat> Once again, we do run on a very, very lean budget here in Cookville. Um, what? What has been? I don't remember us doing the sixty thousand to the chamber. I mean, obviously they, we we're doing a thirty thousands, uh, you know, specified for the Highlands. We, the other thirty, we've been giving them every year, right. for a long time. It's it's for the operations of the chamber. It doesn't have anything to do with the Highlands. Oh, that's right. Oh. I think in years past too, we were writing down debt. There was on their building, on debt on the building still, I think was. Well, we've uh, we've given them thirty thousand directly, and that's actually split up between general fund and utilities, basically in half, uh, mm -hmm. fifteen from the general fund, fifteen from utilities. And then the additional thirty this year would be for designated directly for the Highlands, that phase two of the Highlands. And do we have any comments from the audience? Any additional comments from the council? Seeing no further comments, all vote. Five yes vote, motion carried. All right, thank you, Mr. Davidson. <laughs> Item nine, hold a public hearing to consider on first reading ordinance 100607. <laughs> making appropriations for the various funds, departments, and agencies of the city of Cookville, Tennessee for the 2010-2011 fiscal year. Sponsor, Mike Davidson. Um, Mayor Council members, I have a lot of slides to go over. I'll be as brief as possible. Stop me at any time. Ask me any questions. Uh, just to start with the general fund, which uh, has total revenue estimates uh, for 2010-11 of $19,921,895. We have total estimated expenditures and transfers of $20,103,505. That is a projected decrease in our fund balance of $181,000. <coughs> uh, currently, we have a fund balance of $6.8 million. That $181,000, let me point out that as we move through these slides, you're going to see $200,000 worth of capital uh, that's recommended in this budget. So from an operating standpoint, we have balanced this budget. This 181,000 is basically patrol cars. Uh, just like to point that out to you. It is based on revenue, the 87 cents uh, total property tax rate, with uh, 74 cents of that going to the general fund. It uh, again reallocates that 11 cents uh, from the debt service back to the general fund, <clears throat> and then the CRMC in lieu payment would be uh, allocated to the debt service fund. I'm not estimating any increase in sales tax collections. Uh, we're basing that on $9,549,000, which is basically where we're at for uh, 2010. Just to kind of give you an idea where the revenue, how it breaks down, uh, primarily almost 48% of the total revenue estimates is sales tax, with 25% uh, property tax, and the balance of that uh, coming in different forms, fashions from business license permits, building permits, different, uh, different other uh, methods. Uh, again, Total revenue estimates of $19,921,895. On the appropriation <coughs> side, $20,103,505. It does include a 1% cost of living for employees. It uh, gets our step raises back into effect starting July 1. Those were all frozen in fiscal year 2010. So it starts those back up with our employees. It does include capital equipment of $216,576. That's eight patrol cars and their equipment that goes on those cars, which is 200,576. Wireless microphones are $16,000 for the CPAC. And that's uh, related to new FCC ruling, something with the frequency that Homeland Security's taken over the frequency of the microphones we have now, so we have to purchase new ones to have wireless microphones. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> again, a total of 616,614 allocated to nonprofits. It does include an additional $10,000 allocated to our animal control fund. And I'll discuss their budget uh, in a little bit. Uh, by department, it would allocate for operations $2,391,892 for the general government. Uh, contributions, again, $616,000. Police <coughs> operating $7,143,000. Uh, 
$200,000 in capital for the police department. Operating the uh, budget for the fire department would be $3,789,000. Leisure services operating would be $1,357,000 with $16,000 in capital for the wireless microphones. Uh, operating budget for parks and maintenance would be $1,105,000. Uh, $2,461,000 for the public works operating budget, uh, $953,000 for our planning and codes operating budget. Again, it includes 60, a total $64,220 uh, transferred to our animal control fund and then $3,000 transfer to our tree board fund. So a total operating budget, uh, expenditure budget capital for the general fund of $20,103,505. Uh, just to give you an idea how it, how it breaks down by department uh, for just operating you see the police department is 37 percent of that total total 19 million dollar budget uh, for operations with uh, fire department at 19 percent uh, general government which uh, includes all the uh, utility bills for traffic lights street lights that's uh, 12 percent that's the reason the general government budget jumps up so much but again uh, I'm projecting to uh, begin the fiscal year with a $7 million fund balance. And when you look at the revenue for next uh, fiscal year, 2011, $19 million, the expenditure is $20 million, uh, we're still going to end up with a $6.8 million fund balance where we're sitting right now, or at least that's projections at this point. I'm just going to keep moving through. That's the general fund, State Street Aid. $711,988 fund balance beginning of the year. We've got to, this will change somewhat based on your uh, reallocation of the tax rate. So I'll have to make those changes. I can, I can give you an estimate right okay. now. Paving will be increased about 262,000 based on that. that four cents, which takes your total estimated and we'll get them exactly right for second reading, but it's gonna be around 1,424,000. And that's the total estimated expenditures for right, State Street for Aid. State Street Aid. Okay. So we'll make those uh, changes for second reading for you all. We'll note in the minutes that those are estimates, but that they'll be changed between first and second reading. Okay. Okay. Get that clerk. Yes. All right. Just some things additional in the State Street Aid to point out capital, uh, some equipment for maintaining the roads. Uh, we do have a bridge on Milet Creek Road that's included in this budget to replace that bridge, and uh, the majority of that will be funded 80%, uh, I believe, by a grant through TDOT as well. Uh, there is a $130,000 reflectivity study, which is required under something. Greg would have to help me with what that's required under, but that's required, something we're going to have to do to make sure that all our traffic signs, speed limit signs, everything meet a minimum federal standard. And so that's, uh, that's proposed in this budget as well. So moving on through our solid waste fund, it has an estimated revenue of $1,458,000 with estimated expenditures of $1,526,210. Uh, it does include some capital of a front load sanitation truck, which is roughly $235,000. Dumpsters, uh, 77,000. Uh, we're finishing uh, the recycling center we've talked about for a while over on 15th Street. It's got the funding in there to get the fencing and everything up, up at that point and the paving over there and get those carts over there. Uh, trash carts for, I think those are the residential trash carts at $19,500. ,500. But again, a total operating budget, one million, or total budget, $1,526,000. Uh, estimated to decrease that fund balance, uh, $68,000, but it's we still have a $581,000 projected fund balance at the end of 2011. Our animal control fund is, uh, we're projecting a fund balance for operations uh, to begin the year of $21,760. We've got an estimated revenue of $180,520 with estimated expenditures of $175,000. Uh, we hope to end next fiscal year with a $27,000 uh, fund balance. We do have funding there. As you see, I show $488,000. That's reserved. It's been set aside for the expansion of that uh, animal shelter. That's money that's been donated and raised over the last few years for the expansions. But hopefully we'll be able to add $5,000 to that fund balance. They've uh, struggled this year. They had some expenditures this year that were not budgeted. That was part of the budget amendments you approved earlier. 
uh, work comp claim and an unemployment claim, something we've never had down there. And uh, that, that hit their fund balance hard this year. But uh, hopefully things will settle down there and we'll see a slight increase to their fund balance next year. In our economic development fund, there's one penny of the tax rate allocated to it. We have a fund balance projected at the beginning of the year of 87000 The revenue there, $14,539,000. That's a combination of the bonds that, that's been authorized to uh, build the industrial park. That's a combination of the 7.2 there, plus the city, re or the city, the county reimbursing us for their half of, of that entire project. So that includes their money coming back to us since we'll be handling uh, that project. And it shows the total expenditures projected for the road improvements at the industrial park on Lee Seminary Road of 14478199 It does also include the, uh, the uh, interlocal agreement for the land that has already been purchased down there and that annual payment that we make on behalf of, to the county for the air half of the land that was purchased. And the quality of life fund, we have $1,439,000 in revenue estimated with ex estimated expenditures of $1,500,000. Primarily that uh, expenditures is budgeted for uh, rails with trails project if uh, if we can uh, get to that point and actually get part of the trail built. But uh, that's estimated right now in the budget in case we get to that point. Uh, we are working on trailheads right now, or at least those bids have been awarded as soon as TDEC signs off on it. So at least we'll have three trailheads, two in Putnam or in Cookville and one up in Allgood, we hope. Uh, so we are moving with the Wells with Trails project. Just to clarify, that money was a grant, correct? That money was a grant, yes, yeah. it was. Just wanted to clarify for that. That was a grant through the Tennessee Department of, of Environment and Conservation to build those trailheads, yes. Again, our debt service fund, uh, the revenue will change, uh, the estimates on the revenue with the reallocation of the tax rate, but so we'll clarify all that before second reading. The estimated expenditures of three million one hundred forty six seven seventy three. That should not change. That's uh, that's interest and the principal payments on any debt that we have outstanding, and that's what's budgeted to uh, be paid in two thousand and eleven. And again, that was a slide just to show you that we do have the seven point million that's currently authorized that would be uh, issued soon for the industrial or the business park. Uh, our debt capacity. Uh, eight and a half million to nine that'll change somewhat once we reallocate the tax rate uh, with our water quality department we have estimated ex revenue of 14 million 171 thousand uh, total estimated expenditures of 16 million 601 thousand uh, looking at spending in the reserves in the water department of 36 thousand uh, dollars still leaving a healthy reserve there in the in the water Department of seven million over seven million is what's projected at this point. Electric department has uh, estimated revenue of forty eight million six hundred fifty one thousand dollars with estimated expenditures of forty eight million six hundred thirteen thousand. When you add back the uh, non cash depreciation amortization items, we're looking to add to his cash reserves of one point nine million over one point nine million dollars next year, leaving uh, Estimated reserves at 9.1 million. Thinking our gas fund, we have estimated revenue of 11 million 820 thousand. Estimated expenditures 11 million 541 thousand, and we look to add two reserves there over 900 thousand dollars in our gas department. Our employee health insurance fund. Uh, has estimated revenue three million three hundred eleven thousand. Right now, estimated expenditures of three million eight hundred fifty nine thousand. That's based on our current health plan, health plan design. Uh, we are in the process, as we talked about. We have an insurance committee that is looking at the health plan, looking at wellness clinic, and trying to partner with the Cooper Regional Medical Center. Uh, we have a wellness plan that we're trying to look at, a fitness get fit program that we're trying to incorporate into all this. So. We're working on uh, everything we can to try to design a health plan that will uh, hopefully lower costs for the health care, but be able to offer something to their employees that will meet their individual needs as best that we can. So we're working on that, but right now these estimated expenditures are based on the current plan design and uh, potentially 
the way it's budgeted now, we could, uh, based on claims that we're seeing right now, have a uh, eat into fund balance $548,000. We still end up with a $3.6 million fund balance if this were to occur, but we're working on trying to make some changes to hopefully uh, reduce that, that impact on that fund balance. Mike, I had a question here. Back in January, we modified health benefit plans, <clears throat> or December, January, to go to this S plan. Those, even with those updated numbers, we're still showing this kind of expenditure for claims. Yes. <laughs> and we've had a, uh, <laughs> a couple of new illnesses, I guess you would call it, pop up that, you know, wasn't out there at that point in time. And they were some significant. Uh, but if I remember correctly, that change was, was going to save us about two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, it was going to cut the deficit did. down to. We were looking at over seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand at we one didn't point. We change it in January. Uh, this yeah, number we were be. looking at over a seven hundred thousand dollar deficit at one point. With those change, Blue Cross's estimates so it may be a two hundred thousand dollar deficit instead of a seven hundred thousand. Now it's back up to five, just based on some new. Uh, uh, Illnesses that you know that's out there now. Plus, it didn't go into effect until March. That, we, right? we put it off till March. We gave the employees time. Uh, it, it, we passed it in January, effective March one. Mm -hmm. Jim's right. And uh, but uh, those claims, the, the couple that I know of, they occurred in April. You know, in, in one month we had 400 and some odd thousand dollars in claims just in one month. That's the uh, that's the highest claims in any one single month that I've seen since 2000. Well, since '98. Uh, but we're working on that. Hopefully, we'll be able to make some changes to our health plan design, uh, have a get fit program, we hope, for our employees as well, and possibly the clinic. We hope to be able to work that out with, uh, with Bernie and, and the hospital. Uh, our work comp fund, uh, estimated revenue of 526000 with estimated expenditures of 520000 uh, that's basically claims, work comp claims and things that uh, initially are paid out of this fund and reimbursed out of the general fund. Or the other department. Or the other department, mm -hmm. wherever that might, <laughs> those claims yeah. might come from. Our customer service department is funded by our utilities. It's basically uh, projected revenue, which is coming from the utilities, $1,045,000 with expenditures, $1,045,000. So whatever those expenditures are in customer service, they're reimbursed by the electric, gas, water, sanitation. Uh, our drug fund uh, has estimated <coughs> revenue of $20,000 with estimated expenditures of $47,000. Uh, spending into that fund balance $27,000, leaving a $37,000 fund balance. Looking at purchasing some patrol rifles and another uh, drug dog out of the uh, drug fund. See, our tree board fund has estimated uh, revenue at $4,000, $4,050, with estimated expenditures of $3,225. And I think last that I have on the list is Cookwell Regional Medical Center. Their total budget is a lot. It's a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, total operating expenditure is $224,306,000. Uh, in lieu payment to the city, 700000 Their joint ventures, $5,226,000. Uh, Non-operating expenses, 200000 Have total departmental capital of $13,528,000. And proposed renovations, $21,100,000. And I think that's all I have. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. I forgot. I meant to ask a question about the drug fund. The drug fund, is that where the <clears throat> where that $200,000 from last year would have shown up had we been able to get the re get that cash it is and there's still that potential that's still in the courts okay. uh, but that's where that money it, whatever the city might uh, net out of that and get whatever the settlement is through the courts that will end up back in that drug fund for drug uh, drug investigations and equipment and things for the police department yep but can they use it for like um, can we buy patrol cars with it things like yes. that? Yes, it's a not anything that's a non-recurring. Non -re we can't purchase or uh, non-recurring expenses, but we can do one-time like capital type purchases out of there. So we can buy patrol cars. Yeah. We have any idea when that's <clears throat> going to be settled? Are we talking years? Or? I would anticipate it be it would be within a year. I mean, it's been going on for a long time, and I, I mean, who can imagine that somebody had two hundred thousand dollars confiscated and they want it back? <clears throat> you know. <laughs> I don't know. We may get it. We may not. <clears throat>
All right. Do we have a motion and a second to approve as presented? So moved. Second. I have the motion second. Discussion by the council? I always feel like when Mike gets through reading the budget that we ought to give him a round of applause and <laughs> everybody take a round of applause because um, this is quite an undertaking and it's taken very seriously and lots of work, lots of discussion and um, proud of the city for the way that this comes out. Very good. I'd like to second that. She one of the great things about our departments is they all are excellent at what they do and so it's uh budget you know budgets are challenging obviously we've seen that here tonight but all of our department heads are to be commended for the way yeah. that they steward well over the resources that the citizens have entrusted to them and we are thankful and there's sometimes where we ask harebrained questions and you're thoughtful and direct with your answers and that's greatly appreciated we thank you for your patience with us. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure some of the questions you think are rather silly, I guess. <clears throat> I would just uh, take this opportunity when we looked at that uh, the pie chart about the breakdown of the uh, revenue in the general fund that we're at 47.93% is based upon sales tax. And as I said earlier, I think that's been as high as 56 percent. It may have been 50 percent. Well over 50 percent. Yeah. Well over 50 yeah. percent. And as that number decreases, we have to look for money mm -hmm. in other places such as property tax. So please shop locally. <laughs> yes. And that means inside the city limits of Cookville. That is correct. <laughs> inside the city limits of Cookville. Please spend your money so that your property taxes will stay low. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any comments from the audience? Any further comments from the council? Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. <laughs> to get a cup of coffee after the meeting. <laughs> <I don't know. coughs> it's locked up. Item 10, consider authorizing the purchase of property at 238 West 7th Street for the Cookville Regional Medical Center, sponsor Bernie Mattingly. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of uh, Cookville Regional Medical Center, we ask approval this evening of purchase of property located at 238 West 7th Street for a total purchase price of $120,000, which will be paid from cash reserves. And uh, also want to uh, thank uh, City Manager Shipley for helping us with the negotiation of that uh, transaction. Right. Ask for approval of that uh, trans transaction and purchase. Move for approval. Second. Second. There you go. Uh, any discussion by the council? Glad to see this has started. Yes. There, there was some discussion uh, about relocation of the individuals living in those houses. Do we have any sort of proactive <clears throat> plan with that, or is that we just leave that up to the homeowner? Or the right now, it's owner? up to the homeowners. Uh, the, this one property in question, uh, the daughter will take care of the occupant of that house, her mother, and then the other pre -pro uh, three properties that we're negotiating for. That's still under discussion. Okay. Her mother's not even in the house anymore. Oh, is she not? I'm sorry. I didn't even know that. But we may have to deal with that with some of the other properties. Right. Okay. I uh, certainly hope we take a responsible position on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Any further discussion? Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right. Item 11, consider approval of the renovation and expansion of the EP lab for cost not to exceed $1.8 million. Sponsor, Bernie Manley. Thank you, Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, the Cookville Region Medical Center, again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, has approved and requested approval by the Council for the renovation, expansion, and construction of an electrophysiology lab on a not-to-exceed basis of $1.8 million, also to be paid out of uh, operating funds of the hospital. Specifically, the modica modifications to the facility will include the EP lab, or electrophysiology lab, an arrhythmia clinic, and an atrial fibrillation program. This is a new service that uh, the cardiology and the uh, cardiology group and the hospital is offering to members of our community and region. Uh, with the aging of the population, atrial fibrillation is a major disease among the population and electrophysiology is uh, the primary source of treating that disease. And so we're very fortunate to offer that to our community and to uh, the region and uh, the board ask approval for uh, the proceeding with this project. All right. Do we have a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. second. We have the motion second. Any discussion by the council? Comments from the audience? Seeing no further discussion, all vote. 
five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor members of the council, if I may say, uh, it's probably the last time I get to meet before this council. I want to thank you for uh, your service and dedication and commitment to the hospital and working with us. Uh, you've been very good to work with, and uh, on behalf of the citizens of Cookville in our region, uh, thank you very much for all of your support. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Bernie. <clears throat> now on to item 12, consider a reappointment to the Environmental Appeals Board, sponsored Mr. Greg Brown. Mayor and Council, uh, Jim Hall's term on the board has expired and he's agreed to serve another five-year term and I would recommend your reappointment to him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Do we have a motion and a second? Move approval. Second. second. Have the motion second. Any discussion by the Council? We're always glad when people want to serve. <laughs> This is a uh, pretty light duty, though, from what I understand. Never met. Yeah, we've never met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you took away my you didn't compliment. Have to, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> I was going to say you took no away need, my There was no need to say that. It's required by state law. That just wasn't nice <laughs> to even say that. Any, any further comments from the council or from the audience? <laughs> Seeing no further comments, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right, item 13, consider approval of conservation easement to the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Foundation Incorporated for the restoration of a portion of Cane Creek and an unnamed tributary of Cane Creek in the Highlands Business Park. Sponsor, Mr. Greg Brown. Mayor and Council, this would uh, authorize us to enter into an agreement uh, with the TWRF for a conservation easement, which uh, would allow them to restore uh, the creeks uh, outlined in red, as you see, part of that's Cane Creek, and then it's uh, the other one to go into the east is an unnamed tributary. It presently feeds the pond that we plan to drain. Uh, so we would have had to restore the par portion of the creek that went through the pond. Uh, the TWRF uh, is a program that it's, uh, they work with several state agencies, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, uh, TDEC, among others, and they do several of these across the state. It's just one of the things they do. They're a nonprofit group. Uh, the way they get their money back from this, when other uh, cities or agencies has to uh, restore a creek, they sell them credits. So that's how they will get uh, funding for to doing this. For a little over a mile restoration that they're proposing doing, uh, the cost estimated cost per mile to restore a creek is about a million dollars. So we're getting a little over a million dollars worth of work to do this, and it's not going to cost us anything. The easement will be 50 feet uh, from the bank of the stream both ways, which is exactly the same as our existing stream buffer ordinance, which means we're not giving away anything. We couldn't do anything in that requirement or that area <coughs> anyway. The Cane Creek flood zone is much wider than that. So really we're not, it's just saving us a lot of work and money to do this for them. And uh, I would recommend your approval. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Do we have a motion and a second? So move. So move. <laughs> motion, <laughs> seconds, thirds, and fourths. <laughs> Any discussion by the council? It's Just obviously we like to get things done for us by other people. That's great. <laughs> well, I think it's also a good good opportunity to restore an old older stream. Yeah. Put it back like it was. And I need uh, to figure out some name for it too. I hate for it not to have a name. Be an unnamed. I think in their proposal they call it Green Valley Stream or something like oh. that because of the barn with the name on it. There. Oh. How long does it take to do something like that? Uh, just depends on the weather, but it shouldn't take, I don't know, four or five months, I would guess. The difficulty is going to be draining the pond and get it to dry, I guess. Right, that'll be the, the, the weight up on that section, but the rest of it they could start as soon as we get the, the easement. And will this be, uh, you know, is this a continuous flowing stream or is it like yes. a wet, is it really? Okay. Um, the park that's with the pond, they're moving it to the north side to give us as much room in the business park as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you see the, the yellow areas, there will be two wetlands created there from the stream flow. And the little triangle section uh, between Cane Creek and the tributary, that field we're going to use to mitigate all the wetlands in the park. So if a prospect comes in and they've got wetlands on their site, which there are some in the site, they won't have to worry with mitigating them. They'll already, already be taken care of. Mm -hmm. that's, that's and we did reserve two crossings of the easement, one for the main road and then another crossing uh, that goes to that uh, where I was talking about the wetland mitigation area will be. Okay. Very good. Any additional yeah. comments by the council? And the wetlands area itself uh, is in the riparian flood. zone or the flood, flood zone plane. for Cane Creek? It's in the flood zone of Cane Creek. Yeah. Okay. And also as part of the easement, they will maintain the creeks uh, for five years after this as well. Okay. And the only thing we would have to do even after the five years, if there's any 
livestock in there, we would have to maintain any fencing, fencing to keep them out of this restored area. Hopefully there won't be any livestock. Right. There. Uh, I, maybe we need to back up. I don't know if Jim was wanting us to name the creek after him. Is that what he was? <laughs> no, I've, I've already oh. got streets in town. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, any comments from the audience? Yes. Utilities. No, no utilities. Right. Yes. No utility restrictions. That's correct. Yes, it's mainly uh, uh, vehicle, vehicular traffic, livestock, other than where we have the uh, accepted crossings there. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, there's no building, no agricultural use in there. So we wouldn't have to get an ARAP permit to cross this with utilities? Yes, you still would, but the easement would not prevent him from putting utilities in this area. We'd, Should, st we'd have to get the ARAP anyway. Where the, yeah, the, the ARAP and this don't have anything away. to do. They're two, two wholly different things. Well, not, if, not in the areas where there currently is a where there is not a stream, right? Well, the only part there's not a stream now is where the pond is. Okay. And it's just part of the stream, but impounded, okay. I guess. Yes. It's a damned stream. <laughs> damned, damned. There you go. All right, enough. To, any further questions, comments on the, the motion? Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, Consider awarding bid for the weapons, the police department, sponsor Bob Terry. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, the police department solicited bids for uh, patrol rifles. And uh, we would, uh, there it is. Uh, there were two bidders, uh, the low bidder being uh, Hero Gear uh, for $789. And uh, we'd recommend approval. All right, thanks, Captain Evans. Uh, do we have a motion? Motion second. approval. Second. second. A motion second. All right, any discussion by the council? Any comments from the audience? Uh, just like to send our condolences to Chief Terry and his family and their loss this week. So we'll I'll probably see them before we will. All right. Seeing no further comments, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right. Now on to the added items. Item 15. Consider rescinding the action approved on June 17, 2010, which set a date for a public hearing on Ordinance 100609. Rezoning 1100 Old Calvary Road from RS-20 to QM. Sponsor, Mr. James Mills. Mayor and Council members, it's been determined that the proposed rezoning represents a substantial change from what was reviewed by the Planning Commission. Therefore, it has to go back to the Planning Commission. Now, the Planning Commission won't consider the rezoning until their July 26 meeting, which is after the date that we set for the public hearings. Therefore, we need to rescind the action setting the date for the public hearing on July 15, 2010. All right, thank you, Mr. Mills. Do we have a motion second to approve? So moved. Second. second. We have the motion second. Any discussion by the council? Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right, and item 16, setting the date of August 5th, 2010, for a public hearing on Ordinance 100609, rezoning 1100 Old Calvary Road from RS-20 to QM, and rezoning a portion of eight a portion 1805 East Spring Street from RS-20 to CL sponsor, Mr. James Mills. I don't think he is really needs that. Need, I, is I that shouldn't have listed him as a sponsor. Yeah, it's just, just a set a Okay, yeah. setting a date. That's right. That's my mistake. I listed him as a sponsor. <laughs> just reading away here. All right, so we'll set that date. All right, that concludes our new business portion of our meeting. And at this time, we open up our uh, meetings for up to three minutes. You can come and speak about concerns that you have about the affairs of the city of Cookville. Uh, at this time, I'll open it up to the council. I have uh, one uh, notice I'd like to make. Uh, July is National Blueberry Month, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and we have proclaimed that here in the city of Cookville and Putnam County as well. So get out and enjoy um, one of nature's finest products, blueberries. And you can go to the Tennessee Department of Agriculture. has a website, picktnproducts.org which will show you all the areas in the Tennessee that you can go and pick your own products. Or you can come up here and share a box. Yeah. 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 He was supposed to hold them up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to wish uh, our citizens a uh, happy 4th of July this weekend. Everyone be safe. That's, That's uh, right. Be safe. It's one of our greatest, it is our greatest national holiday and really excited about the weekend affair. I would also like to invite people to mark their calendar for the after dark series of events coming up less uh, the deadline to register for the after dark series of events for the 
the running for the run, the 8K run. The deadline is July the 27th. Uh, it's a way for us to raise money for the Down Down Park. Uh, my wife, it was her idea, and we kind of founded that, so it's a good opportunity for you. Last year, we added the uh, Kids One Mile Fun Run, and so it's a free T-shirt for all you children that want to participate in this run. All you have to do is sign up to get your T-shirt at the prior to that registration, so they get to run down Dixie and be encouraged by a group of people that always hangs out at Alma's house <laughs> on the other end. Two uh, days after the election. And then uh, lastly, the Friday night before, which is August the 6th, we're having the After Dark movie in the park. Uh, in two weeks, you'll see an ad in the paper. We'll be telling you what the movie is. Movie copyright laws don't allow you to say it until two weeks before the event. Or you can check us online in two weeks and you can find out what the movie is. But is I can say that it is one of the largest ever grossing films uh, in history. So you can look that up. Thank you. I'd like to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. And also, I just have to remind everyone that when you set off your fireworks, not only do I want you to be careful, but I also want you to remember the representative of uh, the Rockets Red Glare. And uh, it's about uh, the Declaration of Independence and the founding of this great country. And I always try to remind people that as you're grilling out and shooting off fireworks to take just a moment to think about what how blessed we are to live in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I had the opportunity several years ago to have had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright and she talked about going to lunch with uh, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor and she mm -hmm. said she always carried a copy of the Constitution with her that it is the oldest, the longest standing uh, democracy in the world, and we want to keep it that way. Any uh, further comments by the council? Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. So moved.